we live in a fascinating world of plants plants are primary producers on which all forms of life depend there are over 300000 species of plants but only 1% of them are cultivated the cultivated plants are grown in agriculture systems an agriculture system is a managed ecosystem called agroecosystem in which the producer makes important decisions depending on its socio economic infrastructure environmental conditions and political factors the objective of a farmer is uh, to maximize profit or crop yield in most of the situation crop yield is the weight of grain or some other product at some agreed standard moisture content per unit of land area harvested according to ct david principles of production ecology crop yield can be categorized into three types number 1 potential yield number 2 limited yield and number 3 actual yield potential yield is defined by crop growth factors such as carbon dioxide temperature light and crop genetics limited yield is defined by abiotic factors mainly water and nitrogen and actual yield is defined by yield reducing factors such as weeds insect pests diseases and pollutants in addition to the yield limiting abiotic factors the difference between actual and potential yield is called as yield gap if we talk about biological sources of yield reduction the cultivated plants are robbed by different enemies from seedling establishment to harvest and during storage these enemies of cultivated crops are best described by a technical term pest pest is an all inclusive term which includes those organisms those annoying organisms of animal or plant origin which are detrimental to human or human concerns such as crops and livestock pest can be categorized into four types plants as pests technically called weeds disease causing organisms insect pests and the non insect vertebrates or invertebrates such as rodents birds porcupine etc these pests can reduce crop yield by 30% of its potential yield or even more depending on the farmer's management practices and environmental conditions or political factors of these 30% losses about 45% losses are caused by weeds 30% by insect pests 20% by disease causing organisms and 5% by other factors such as rodents birds etc in agriculture systems one of the major objectives of farmers is to control or manage these yield reducing factors weeds insect pests disease causing organisms rodents birds etc and to increase the population of beneficial organisms such as beneficial microorganisms insect pests predators etc in order to achieve this objective 
we need to apply an integrated approach or integrated pest management. According to FAO, integrated pest management is the careful consideration of all available pest control techniques and subsequent integration of the appropriate measures that discourage the development of pest populations and keep pesticides and other interventions to levels that are economically justified and reduce or minimize risk to human health and environment. IPM emphasizes the growth of a healthy crop with least possible disruptions to agroecological systems and supports the natural pest control mechanisms. So using these integrated pest management approaches including preventive measures, biological measures, cultural practices and chemical control, we protect the plants against its enemies or pests. So crop production is defined as the science and art of protecting crops against different pests such as weeds, insect pests, disease causing organisms, rodents, birds, etc. Weeds are the number one pest. Weeds are the unwanted plant or a plant growing out of its proper place is called a weed. For example, if a mustard plant is growing in a weed field, then mustard plant will also be considered as a weed, although it has uh, multiple uses. So not necessarily weeds are wild. Even a cultivated plants, even the cultivated plants out of its proper place are also considered as weed. So weeds are undesirable in a particular situation and their removal is a source of economic, social, aesthetic or medical relief for human beings. Weeds are highly competitive plants that compete with the cultivated plants for everything, space, light, nutrients and water. Hence they cause direct reductions in yield as well as quality. In addition, they also harbor or host uh, other enemies of crops such as insect pests, disease causing organisms, snails, rodents, etc. In addition to yield reduction, weeds also reduce the quality of final produce. For example, if they are mixed uh, with grains at the time of harvest, they reduce the quality of produce or if that seed is to be used for, for sowing of the next crop, then the seed quality is reduced. Some of the weeds are uh, very toxic or allergic uh, to animals and human beings. For example, giant milkweed or parthenium or hemp. Weeds are also a source of reducing the aesthetic beauty of a park, of a garden, of a lawn. Weeds are also a source of increasing the environmental pollution because uh, we have to apply huge quantities of biocides or herbicides for controlling these unwanted plants. So due to uh, their competition with the cultivated plants for light, water, nutrients and other effects you know, I just described, they reduce the yield and quality of crops. Uh, the estimated yield reductions in imported field crops are 18 to 30 percent for wheat, 13 to 41 percent for cotton, 17 to 39 percent for rice, 10 to 35 percent in sugarcane, 
and 24 to 47% in males. So due to reduction in uh, yield and quality of the crop, the cost of production is increased and the net benefit is reduced, thus reducing or lowering the farmer's income. Weeds also have some advantages. Uh, for example, some of the weeds are used in medicines or as medicines. Uh, in dryland systems, they cover the soil and hence uh, reduce erosion and increase the infiltration, that is the entry of water into the soil. Weeds are also an indicative of soil fertility status or soil health. For example, in a fertile soil, uh, weeds like goosegrass, thistle and chickweed thrive, while in light and dry soil, uh, weeds like dandelions and poppy thrive best. Some of the weeds are fed to animals as fodder or they are used in uh, human food as well. Weeds are also a source of genetic diversity and their competitive traits uh, are being explored for induction in the cultivated plants improvement. Seed dispersal is facilitated by wind, water, animals and human beings. The unattended places like water channels, railway tracks, roadsides, forest area, graveyards are source of seed dispersal. Seeds, uh, weed seeds can be eaten by animals and when their uh, excreta is applied to fields as farmyard manure or when animals move from one field to the next, uh, they can be a source of uh, seed dispersal. Sometimes uh, the quarantine or legislative measures are not uh, appropriate and a new weed species may be introduced in a country. For example, uh, Phalaris minor or Dumbi city that is a major wheat of wheat based system uh, was introduced into Pakistan in 60s when weed seed was imported. Weed seeds have amazing capacity of propagation. They can propagate sexually through seed and asexually through other plant parts like rhizomes, cones, stolons, roots, stem. Weeds have some amazing features which ensure their survival and adaptation even under unfavorable conditions. Number one is their capacity to produce high number of seeds. For example, common purslane plant produces 52,000 seeds per plant and which weed can produce as many as half a million seeds per plant. Moreover, they can also propagate through vegetative plant parts like rhizomes, stolons, tubers and creeping root systems. Some of the weed seeds have special features, for example, cocal bar has spines uh, through which it can attach itself to animals or human beings. Wild oat has a bent on uh, which, helps us, which helps it to enter into a bare soil and some of the weeds have hairy structure which help them to be carried away by wind. Besides high capacity for seed production, they also have a longer period of dormancy. For example, field bindweed can remain in a state of inhibited germination or dormancy for as long as 20 years. And common lamb squatters can remain dormant for 40 years. Other traits that are uh, crucial for their Adaptation and survival include stress resistance against drought, salinity, freezing, etc. Their resemblance with cultivated crop plants, 
for example wild oat plant resembles oat barley and wheat so these features uh, help survival adaptation and dispersal of weeds over large areas weeds can be classified as annual weeds which complete their life cycle in one year or one growing season for example fox tail or lamb's quarter biennial which complete their life cycle in two growing season for example pigweed and perennial weeds are those uh, which are difficult to control once they are established they include many grass and non grass species such as johnson grass purple nut sedge and field bind wheat weeds can also be classified as narrow leaved or monocot such as wild oat and bermuda grass and broad leaves such as milkweed and dandelion weeds are highly competitive plants and there is a certain period when the crop plants are most sensitive to damage by weeds called as critical period of competition usually these are the first 30 or 40 days when the cultivated plants are most sensitive to damage by weeds so there are different methods to control weeds which can be categorized into uh, three types number 1 is the preventive measures number 2 is the agronomic measures and number 3 is the chemical control among preventive measures number 1 is the clean cultivation clean cultivation is frequent cultivation or plowing of soil to prevent growth of all vegetation except the desired crop clean cultivation also means keeping everything clean that comes in contact with soil or crop such as seeds machinery tools water channels graveyards roads railway tracks farmyard manures etc according to a proverb one year seeding seven year seeding so weeds must be controlled before their flowering or reproductive stage fallowing or land without crop should be avoided but if inevitable weeds should be controlled by suitable measures for example by grazing of livestock however small the number of weeds is it should be immediately removed other preventive measures include legislative measures for example quarantine laws to control weeds burning of weeds incorporation of weed residues into soil and it is very important to know the field history for example in a previously weed infested fields it is not recommended to sow the direct seeded rice crop that is less competitive to weeds among agronomic practices dab method is highly recommended that is comparable to the stale bed technique in dab method the weeds are allowed to germinate by providing suitable conditions for their growth and subsequently destroyed by the cultivations or by the application of herbicides in dab method after the harvest of previous crop a soaking irrigation locally called rony is done and after rony when the soil is in workable condition for tillage operation the field is cultivated twice followed by planking and the field is left in this situation for 5 for 7 to 10 days to allow weeds to germinate depending on the environmental conditions so when the weeds seeds emerge which are brought to the soil surface uh, by the tillage operation and favorable conditions are available for their growth they are subsequently killed during the land preparation operations for seed bed preparation or they can also be destroyed by the application of herbicides so dab method is a very effective method 
uh, for weed control in timely sown crop but not recommended for late sown crop due to time limitations another useful strategy is crop rotation in fields which are highly infested with weeds so crop rotation with multi cut fodder crops like barseem or weed competitive crops like sorghum and pearl millet can effectively control weeds increasing plant population or adjusting the row spacing or sowing methods filling the gaps in case of poor germination hoeing with hand tools like kosola or khurpa use of agriculture machinery such as harrow and cultivator are also useful agronomic or cultural practices to control weeds paddy fields are submerged uh, which controls most of the weeds other crucial strategies are growing the early growth varieties land leveling and scouting for weeds if preventive measures or agronomic practices could not be applied or could not control weeds then last resort is the chemical control method chemical control is an effective and rapid method but often criticized due to its environmental concerns or unaffordability of some farmers different herbicides are available to kill weeds which can be classified as pre-plant pre-emergence post-emergence and pre-harvest herbicides pre-plant herbicides like treflon are applied to the soil before planting to kill most of the weed seeds pre-emergence herbicides are applied to the soil after the crop has been planted but before the crop or weeds have emerged for example pendimethaline or asmetola clor post emergence herbicides are applied after the crop or weeds have emerged for example phenoxyprop sulfosulfuron clodinafob glyphosate etc post harvest herbicides are applied after harvest but before tillage for example glyphosate the biochemical mechanism which are used by herbicides to kill or destroy weeds are called as their mode of action so there are different modes of action some herbicides interfere with growth regulators some herbicides inhibit amino acid synthesis lipid synthesis nitrogen metabolism and photosynthesis of weeds and some herbicides disrupt the cell membranes thus destroying the important cellular functions so a farmer has to consider uh, different options according to his farm size resources and environmental condition so as to keep weeds below the economic threshold level at which uh, weeds cannot cause the economic damage so integrated weed management is the use of all direct and indirect method to control weeds in an efficient way